Hi all, welcome back to System Vlog Sessions. In this video, I'm going to discuss RAND mode and constraint mode. So first, we'll start with the RAND mode. RAND mode is a method which is used to control the active or inactive state of the RAND variables, RAND or RANDC variables. Okay, so that means whether we can perform the randomization for that variable or not. These things we can control. RAND mode is nothing but a uh, randomization mode. Okay, whether we can randomize the variable or not, whether we can turn off the RAND mode or not. These things we can uh, perform by using the RAND mode method. So variables who is having random nature declared as RAND or RANDC can be turned on or off dynamically by using an inbuilt method called RAND mode. So this RAND mode is an inbuilt method. Inbuilt method means you cannot override it. Okay, and in dynamically means in runtime we can change the mode of a random variable. Okay, we can turn off or turn on uh, by calling the method. Okay, so during the runtime, and it can be called either function or task. Rand mode method, right? So this method can be function or task. So how to differentiate? How to find out whether it is a function or task? Here in rand mode, in the function, if you call it as a function, okay, you you don't pass any arguments. Rand mode parenthesis inside the parenthesis you don't pass any argument okay and it will return one or zero it will return one if randomization is enabled otherwise it will return zero when you call it as a function okay function means you don't pass any arguments and if you call it as a task when you call rand mode as a task we will pass the arguments zero or one zero means it is disabled one means enabled okay randomization needs to be disabled or enabled before calling the randomized method so if it is disabled before then you need to enable it before randomizing otherwise if you disable the rand mode and uh, if you call the randomization method it will not uh, randomize the variable because you have disabled it right so in order to randomize in order to enable the randomization again first you need to enable it by calling function or task okay if you call if you call the rand mode as a task you need to pass it as a rand mode of one then only you, you have to call randomized method otherwise it won't randomized and if a random variable is declared as a static the rand mode state of the variable shall also be static so if you declare the variable rand or randc variable as a static then you know right what is static static means if any changes occur to that variable that will be uh, re that will be reflected in all other instances right in static nature same as a static variable so we will see this static nature in the example okay i will tell you there only so just remember that if a random variable is declared as a static the rand mode state of the variable shall also be static and this is the um, this is how we call the rand mode complete class randomization can be disabled by writing like this object handle so here class handle you need to write dot rand mode of zero zero means we know right to disable the rand mode we will use zero this is task now because we are passing the argument and particular variable randomization can be disabled so if you don't want to disable the whole object you, you want to disable the particular variable which is present in that object that time you have to use this dot in the inside the object uh, you can choose any variable okay so if it has a three variables abc you can you can just uh, turn off the rand mode of that variable here okay for example p1 dot a dot rand mode means inside the p1 object we have a variable a and you are disabling it by calling the task rand mode of zero okay and if you want to again perform the randomization and you need to enable it before calling the randomization method right here i have explained before calling the randomized randomization method we need to enable it if it is disabled before okay so here it is disabled so in order to again randomize you first you have to enable it how to enable rand mode of one okay so this is uh, rand mode so now we will see constraint mode constraint mode is same as rand mode only but here it is used to control the nature of the constraints that is enable or disabling the constraint okay here uh, constraint mode is a it, it is also can be called as a functional task okay by default all the constraints blocks are enabled in the rand mode also by default it is enable only if you want to uh, disable it you have to call rand mode of zero similarly in constraint block by default it is enabled and if you want to disable the constraint then you need to call constraint mode of zero okay uh, as i said it it can be called either functional task right constraint mode so how to differentiate between function and task if you pass the arguments then it is task and if you don't pass the arguments it is function okay so when you call the constraint mode as a function 
that means it will return 1 or 0 okay it returns 1 if the constant is enabled and if it returns 0 if the constant is disabled and in order to when you call the constant mode as a task you have to pass the arguments constant mode of 1 means constant mode is enabled and constant mode of 0 means constant mode is disabled so uh, this is all about constant mode and rand mode now we will see the example so the syntax is also same how you call the rand mode similarly you will call the randomized uh, constant mode okay so we will see in the example so this is the example for rand mode and constant mode so first i will tell you the rand mode so inside the class sequence item i have two variables which is of 8 bits and two constraints a should be inside 10 down to 30 and b should b can be 40 or 70 or 80 this is my constant and inside the enable disable ex, uh, module i am instantiating the se sequence item class item one is the handle and i'm creating the object okay item one is my object now and i'm calling the randomized method when you call the randomized method you will get some random values for the variables a and b right so uh, i'm calling the randomized method i'm displaying here and after that i want to disable the randomization mode for variables a and b that means for the entire object i want to disable it that time if you want to disable the rand mode for the entire object you just have to use the object handle object handle dot rand mode and here i am using task task means we are passing the arguments zero means disable one means enable so i disabled the rand mode i am calling the randomized method when you disable the randomization mode for the variables and if you call the randomized method you will not get the new values you will get the previous values what it holds okay previously if it have some values same value will be returned after calling the randomized method also okay if you want to get the new values if you want to get the new values you need to enable it before calling the randomized method this point we have discussed in the theoretical in that in that slide slide right so if you want to call the randomized method uh, you need to enable the rand mode if it is disabled before here it is disabled so in order to uh, enable it in order to call the randomized method you need to enable it then only randomization will be applied otherwise previous value you will get after randomization also okay and here uh, this is for entire object item one dot hand uh, i'm using right object handle dot random uh, rand mode i'm using so if you want to uh, disable the rand mode for a particular variable that time how to write item uh, means object handle dot the variable name dot rand mode here i want to disable the rand mode for a uh, variable b only not for a that time item one dot b dot rand mode here zero disable right so i'm calling the randomized method uh, if you disable the rand mode and if you call the randomized method you will get the previous value so that value i will get in this statement and till now we have seen the task task means we are passing the arguments one or zero so you uh, know what i'm doing i want to return some values that's why i'm using function okay i want to check the status of the variable whether it is uh, enabled or not randomization rand mode is enabled or not in order to check that i want you have to you, you can use the rand mode function okay and that means you should not pass the any arguments for function so now i will run the code here you can see first time randomizing it i'm getting 14 and 70 after disabling the entire object i'm getting the previous value only when we disable the rand mode we, uh, and when we are calling the randomized method we will get the previous values that's why i'm getting 14 and 70 and after enabling the randomization mode after enabling the rand mode here enabling the rand mode i'm calling the randomized method now i can get the new values because we enable the rand mode so randomization is applied this time after that what i'm doing um, here i'm disabling the rand mode for the variable b that's why i'm getting the previous value for variable b previously it has 80 and when i call the rand randomized method i'm getting the 80 because b is disabled rand mode of variable b is disabled that's why i'm getting the previous value and for variable a new value i'm getting because for variable a rand mode is not disabled and for the last statement here i'm checking the status right active or inactive state of the rand variable that's why since a is enabled i'm getting the value one and b is disabled i'm getting the value zero okay this is for a function rand mode function so i will tell you one more point uh, i have told you that static keyword right so static static you know static right so static variables similarly in uh, rand mode also so the application is same static nature of the 
variable okay so if you declare the rand variable as a static then if you perform the rand mode on that variable that will be applied on all the instances of the class if you have multiple instances if you have n number of instances for the sequence item class in all the sequence item handles in all the sequence item objects uh, the rand mode will be applied okay so i will show you in the in this example only here consider i have two instances okay item 1 and item 2 now i will create the object for second handle item 2 and here you can see for the variable b we disable the rand mode right so now uh, and i'm calling the randomized method for the item 1 i will call the same randomized method for item 2 also this time what i have to get for the handle 2 also rand mode should be applied here variable b we have disabled the rand mode for variable b so that should be applicable for item 2 also in order to check that i will display the statement okay here item 1 item 2 here also item 2 okay now i will run the code since a uh, variable b is static in nature for the second handle for the item 2 also uh, b should get the same value as item 1 okay see i'm getting the value 80 because for variable b rand mode is disabled since the variable b is static in nature it is applying for the all the instances right that's why i'm getting the value 80 in the second instance in the item 2 also uh, for variable b rand mode is disabled since the variable is static in nature okay now i will modify it i will just remove the static keyword i will run the code now you can see the different value okay because uh, it will not affect the other instances see i am getting 80 because in the item 1 i disabled the rand mode that's why i am getting the previous value but in item 2 I'm getting the different value because in item 2 I'm not uh, disabling the rand mode and it is not a static nature okay so this class is different this class is different so when it is uh, static then only the any changes made to that one variable will be reflect on another object okay here so this is about static nature of the uh, static nature of the variable in rand mode so now we will see constraint mode so in the same example i commented all the rand mode and i'm including the constraint mode okay so here you can see uh, same constraint a should be inside 10 down to 30 and b should be inside uh, so that means b can be 40 70 or 80 okay so two handles i have first i'm randomizing the object and uh, i'm disabling the constraint mode by using the task constraint mode task okay zero means disable one means enable when you disable the constraint mode what happens constraints will be not applied and this constraint will be ignored by using uh, by calling the randomized method okay when the constraint mode is disabled that time it the constraint will be ignored by the randomized method that means it will generate some random values the constraints will not be applied okay for the entire object we have this constraint right a underscore c and b underscore c so this constraint will not be applied a can be any value b can be any value okay when you disable the constraint so here i will get some random values and here in this line what i'm doing i'm enabling the constraint mode before randomizing now the constraint will be applied whatever the constraints i have specified that will be applied this time so i will get the constraint values for the variable a and b and after that and after that what i am doing i am disabling the particular constraint i have two constraint in the object right i have a underscore c and b underscore c so i want to disable this constraint what i have to do i have to take the object handle dot the constraint identifier constraint identifier means constraint block name here a underscore c and b underscore c is the constraint identifier i want to disable this constraint so i am using the name b underscore c so item one dot b underscore c dot constraint mode of zero that means i am disabling the b underscore c constraint i am randomizing the uh, object item one and item two first i will run the code whatever you have seen for rand mode same applies for constraint mode but this time we are disabling the constraints okay not the randomization see before disabling the constraint constraint is applied for variable a and b a should be inside 10 down to 30 right 10 down to 30 
and B B can be 40, 70 or 80. Constant is applied. I am getting 70 and I am getting 14. So after that what I am doing? I am disabling the constraint. I am disabling the constraint for entire object. Inside the object we have two constraint and we are disabling the constraint means we are disabling all the constraints A underscore C also, B underscore C also. That's why I am getting some random values. See, when I say, when I said uh, disabling the constraint, disabling the constraint mode means it will be, the constraints will be ignored by the randomization call. Constraints will be disabled by, uh, constraints will be ignored by the randomized call. Okay, that's why I am getting some uh, random values, not the constraint values. I am getting 225. 225 is out of range. See, 10 down to 30, where 10, uh, 10 down to 30 is there. And we are getting 225, right? And 63. We don't have 63 inside this range. But we are getting some random values. That means constant is ignored. Constant is not considered. Okay. And after enabling the constant, again I am getting the constraint values. 22 is inside 10 down to 30 and 80. 80 is inside this range. 40, 70, 80, right? So I am getting 80. This is after enabling the constraint. Now, um, I'm, I have two handles, right? Item 1 and item 2. I am disabling the constraint mode. I am disabling the constraint. What, what constraint? This B underscore, B underscore C. This is my constraint identifier. This constraint identifier B underscore C. In the object item 1. Okay. By using the item 1 object, I am disabling the B underscore C constraint. That means only for this object, I am disabling the uh, B underscore C constraint. What is the constraint B underscore C? That means B should be inside 40, 70, 80. Since I disabled it, I am getting some random value. 169 is not there in this list, right? That means some uh, random value I am getting because I disabled the constraint. And for item 2 object, I am getting the constraint value only. 70 only I am getting constraint value because it is not applied for the second item so second handle because it is not static nature now we I will tell you the static nature how we have seen the static um, keyword in the rand mode right similarly in constraint we use the static keyword with the constraint block okay before the constraint we use the keyword static here in rand mode we use the static keyword with the variable because we have we have to randomize the variable right but constraints we will use the uh, use it for the constraint block so we will use the keyword static here now i will run the same code okay now you can see the changes see b is a constraint for b is not considered because we have disabled the constraint block b underscore c and that is applied in the item 2 object also that's why i'm getting 38 30 38 is not there in the list b is 40 70 80 only b can be 40 or 70 or 80 it can't get the other values except in the list okay since the constraint is static in nature whatever the uh, operation you made for that constraint will be applied in all the instances of the class here we have two instances and you turned off the constraint mode for the uh, b underscore c constraint that's why it is reflect in all the other instances okay in item one also item two also if we have multiple instances n number of instances in all the instances the constraint constraint will be disabled this b underscore c constraint will be disabled in all the instances if it is a static okay so this is the use of static constraint and this is all about rand mode and constraint mode you can go through the code and if you have any doubts please put the comment thank you